I'm Ryan Maliar, and welcome to another fresh edition of Corner Office. I'm joined by Mayor Christian Dumas, and today we are filming on March 28th, 2024. Welcome back to the studio, Mayor. It's great to be back. Wonderful having you, as always. I've got a big list here of all different things that we need to tackle, but of course, what's on everyone's mind, meaning what's mostly on your mind, is budget planning. And we're just in the early stages of planning the budget right now. Uh, you've, you've told me that you're planning for a conservative yet effective budget. How do you manage all of that? Um, very delicately. Right. Yeah. No, I, you know, I, I'm very excited. It's my first budget to send down to city council. So we're working with the numbers now. All the department heads gave me their information. Now it's my job to sift through it and then meet with them to see what their priorities are. And so uh, we can work and work the numbers with that and then present it to city council where they'll do their due diligence and uh, figure out what their priorities are. So do you anticipate any big changes or any significant changes in the budget in any particular department or going to try and keep it as low as I possibly can? Absolutely. <laughs> so that hopefully will stay the same. <laughs> right. Um, switching gears a little bit. Last time you were here, we were talking about the rodent issue in the city. And what updates can you provide regarding this issue in Marlboro? I know that there's plans to put some public uh, traps in different locations. Yeah, so I want to thank everyone who actually did their rodent sighting. We got a lot of, uh, more than I thought, which is a good thing and a bad thing, and, I guess. Uh, yeah. um, but no, just the response has been great. So thank you for everyone who has um, putting in their sighting. And now we collected that data and put into like a GIS. So I actually have a map of where all the rodent settings were. Which it looks sort of like a weather map with like, it's, it's, it's hot over here and it's cool over it's here. It's actually little rats, oh. like, like little like the icons of rats and where they all are. So we've been working with Board of Health and um, the building department to figure out now the next step is to figure out where those traps go. So that's the next step. So we'll be putting an announcement once that's um, situated and uh, so the public is aware that, hey, these are happening and this is just going on. So we are still actively working on it. I appreciate your patience with this. I know it's been an ongoing issue. We are doing things. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that it's not fun to talk about, but um, it, it, we are actively working on it. So, Do you do you want people to report multiple times or to continue to report? If it's a new sighting, um, yes. But if it's the same, we, we already have that data collected. Um, and Because I know you've seen a drop off in reporting. Correct. So people shouldn't feel like they have to continue to report Correct. that one report. So we're going to utilize that, whether they're still there or not. We're still utilizing that data mm -hmm. because they probably are still in that area. Sure. Um, whether it's in specifically that sighting or in your neighborhood. Um, I believe the traps can go up to like 300 feet. So um, it's a very robust um, process. So uh, there's no need to continue reporting unless it's a new site. Right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So we had another department heads meeting this morning. And thank you for involving WMCT TV. It's mm -hmm. great to really get a lot of perspectives on what's happening in the city in one meeting with all of the, the big players there. And something that a lot of people were really excited about is reporting on the SCRIPT program. Yes. Uh, explain what that program yeah, is. Yeah, so it's a great program for our seniors. It's been going on for quite a numerous of years now. So it's a great program for seniors where they can, it's like a tax work off program. So they work about 100 hours and they get uh, $1,500 off their taxes. So Significant. It's, it's huge, you know, and, and that could just be enough to make or break, you know, a senior with their limited income. So they, get um, different jobs throughout different departments in the city, and they kind of help out and assess um, different areas that are needed. So, And it was interesting to hear the wonderful skill sets that the seniors come in because they fill out a questionnaire about and trying to fit someone that has great ac an accounting background or a mechanical background and how the different uh, the city departments are collaborating, saying, oh, well, I can definitely use that person. Right. We need a bookkeeper over here, over there. And, so it's it, fantastic. It, and it's a great resource to tap into, you know, so why not utilize that? And another way that we get people involved at, in working at City Hall is the City College Internship Program. Yeah, which is extremely exciting. It's coming back and applications will open up in April. So if you are a college um, student and want to work for um, the municipal government, we're happy to have you. Again, there's always projects that different department heads need. So if we can have talented young individuals that are excited about municipal government and get them engaged in a completely different way, then please submit your application because uh, we, we definitely could use the help.
<laughs> and they're treated really well too, and they have a good time too. And yeah. it doesn't have to be specifically municipal government. There are opportunities in the IT department Absolutely. and doing things like I mentioned, like bookkeeping, which can translate to a lot of different areas. But of course, the goal is probably to keep them in that municipal government and well, and no, attract I, some know, good it, employees. It is, it is in the funny future. to say that, but I think of that as municipal government. You know, like you can still work in IT, but in the municipal government. Um, arena, you know, and a lot of right. people don't think that, you know, so just because I'm in accounting, that doesn't mean that you have to go work for an accounting firm. You can work for your local municipal government, which to me, like, I don't think people think of that. You know, I certainly didn't. No, no. When can uh, students begin applying? So April uh, begins around in April. So that will be when that happens. But again, we'll be posting that on our social media. Yep. And it'll websites. be right there on the website as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, you had a great chat and chew. I think that was last month. I believe it was. It all it all blurs together. <laughs> I'm sure. But you have either way. You have another chat and chew planned. What is a chat and chew? Yeah, no, it's a, a great little program. Um, so we go to the senior center and um, they have breakfast on a Saturday morning. And um, thanks to the Lions Club because they were phenomenal. And now the junior women's is sponsoring the food for this May 11th chat and chew. So it starts at 10 o'clock, and they kind of the seniors come in and they have to sign up. And they can ask me any questions that they have and kind of get what's going on within the city. And it's about an hour and a half of Q&A with the mayor. Um, and it's great. You know, I think we had about 80 something seniors and there was like a wait list of 30. So it was very well received and they're excited to just to be heard, you know, and. I guess my question is, is this something only for, for seniors? Because for there are a lot of people that want to get this information. There is. So we are planning a town hall. Um, so we just need to lock in a date for that. But um, so this was kind of a mini version of that, um, kind of a test yeah, test run, I guess, of what I can expect during a, a town hall. And I can only imagine that it's going to be a much larger capacity when you open up. <laughs> that's the goal. I hope that's so. The goal. Hope well, yeah. So again, I think that's whole, the whole part of why I wanted to run, you know, is to have that mobile mayor's office where we are reaching out to the community so they can see firsthand questions, answers, and get it directly from the mayor's office. Like, no, this is my plan. This is actual. This is not actual, you know? Um, and I think that's why it was such a huge hit for the seniors, and they're excited for the next one. Uh, so stay tuned for the town hall. I, I promise it's coming. It's been a very busy few, few months. <laughs> Now, of course, it's a rainy March day right now, but I can just feel the spring and feel the summer coming. And I'm just like hoping the sky will just open up and just be beautiful any, anytime soon. And you've decided to switch up the, um, the senior barbecue this year. A little bit. Yeah. So uh, instead of having at Memorial Beach, we're going to have it right down at Wood Park. Um, it's closer to the senior center. It makes more sense from a transportation standpoint. You got well. parking there and the parking and we're not walking on sand and it's more level. Um, you know, I think you bring your own beach chair, but it's kind of hard to be in the sand and kind of eat. So we're going to move it to Ward Park and kind of keep it downtown, keep it local, keep it close to, to the senior center. And that way we can do more things, um, cornhole and bocce and horseshoes and just kind of make it more of a backyard kind of feel, yeah. you know, again, um, get rid of the stuffiness of the beach and all that stuff. But there's a little stuffy about the beach. I just don't like sand in every day. You know, like it's just not a good thing. So it's always um, been a good time, and I'm I can't wait to see your your twist on it and see what you bring to the party. It's, it's going to be a good time, and exactly what it is a party. It is know? a party. Why not? Right, um, a different kind of party. The fire station subcommittees, these ongoing talks of subcommittees and the fire station project that have just been flooding my ears for a long time now. This, is this a new committee that's being formed to, to tackle yes. this fire station? Uh, there's some returning members, you know, because they went through the process before. Um, some old city councilors or seasoned city councilor that was on a previous. Um, two new city councilors are on it as well. Um, obviously, fire, police, DPW, they're involved as well. Um, so, yeah, so they, the meeting or the group has been formed and the first meeting is the first week of April. So I'm excited that that's starting and get that off the plate so they can kind of figure out what the next where the location is going to be and kind of and it is a long process regardless of how it quickly is. anyone wants this to move along including the fire chief himself and all the related personnel yourself included it is a vetting process it is a step-by-step -step arrangement to it get is. from point a to having this finished building yeah and i and i think that was 
kind of the goal during the inauguration speech is like, look, I, I appreciate that we need this, but it's not going to be an overnight thing. You know, again, trying to figure out which parcels of land we can obtain is a whole nother level regarding response times. Because obviously the whole point of having a West Side Fire Station is those response times. So trying to find a location that does respond to that is, it's not an easy task. And so once we narrow that down, funding for it, um, the process, how big the, the fire station is going to be, it, there's a lot of little details that cannot be overlooked. Right. But uh, Separate from the fire station, but public safety in general, they got some great new updates recently that they were talking about this morning. Yes. Uh, can you rattle any of those? Yeah, no, um, we pitched to city council and uh, a new fire truck, which is needed. Um, so we're excited for that. And then a new tower to tower for radio signals. Radios, the radios have been upgraded. So that was towards the end of last year. So with the previous administration. So thankful for that. And um, as a city council, we we approved that. And now it's nice to see that they're actually getting upgraded and installed. And yeah, and it just feels like we're like the city's staying on top of these things, which are really so vital to the safety of the city. And obviously, public safety is a huge concern, you know, so to be able to get these upgrades, it's it's extremely beneficial for the city overall, especially with the events that we do have, you know, God forbid something should happen at Ward Park, you know, the radios are going to work or during Labor Day when there's a lot of cell phone service, we have actual connections that so public safety can actually respond to God forbid an issue. Right, right. Another exciting thing that that pops up every year and it's really wonderful to see the whole city get involved is Project Clean Sweet. Clean Sweet yeah. And people put on their gloves and they're able to, uh, how does it work? You RSVP to pit for bags? Yeah, you and... can call DPW to, to sign up and register. So if you have a big group, so we know that, that you're coming. So, I mean, churches, organizations, different private businesses, they employees, they all come out, which is great. Again, we're cleaning up the community, which happens once a year. And uh, I mean, you can clean up the city at any time. At, at any time, I mean, you can give them a call and say, hey, can we get some garbage bags? They won't say they no. They will never say no. <laughs> we'll coverage that. But uh, it's just nice to see the community come together for one day and kind of pick up the pick up the city. And how much trash is it usually that get picked? Well, I mean, we were just told this this morning, so I believe four to five tons of tons. trash, which is... Disgusting, but amazing. Yeah, bittersweet, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. But again, it's just nice to see the community rallying together. You know, when we're there at nine a.m. and you see all these different people come out in droves that want to help um, do their part to keep Marlboro beautiful. It's 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 a good community thing, although not the best because <laughs> we're picking up trash. But um, there's something beautiful about people rallying together to take pride in their community. Yeah, and Marlboro does have so many beautiful things to explore. And you're going to be, are you leading a hike? What is this I here about yes, I Mayor Christian out in nature? <laughs> to, yeah, it's not my thing. But um, so Clean Sweep is April 27th. April 27th. So we need to throw the date down right, there. Right. So April 27th from 9 to 12. So you meet at DPW and, um, but yeah, and then I'm on a hike. Uh, and that's for that. Uh, on the 21st. That's April right. 21st. So yeah, at 11 a.m. I'm going to walk around Galoni and um, they run the hike mass project. So um, again, and Marlboro has over 40 miles of hiking trails. So it's just kind of showcasing that. And then we'll be showcasing that overly all summer long, the different trails, because why not? You know, it's, it's another thing that Marlboro has to offer, but it's, it's a resource. Show. It's free. There's been so much work done to make it accessible. At least large parts of the trail are yeah. accessible for either for bikers or wheelchairs or, or different access. It's yeah. And for Priscilla in conservation does an incredible job. I mean, they have a white, uh, walking trail um, group that goes out and clears the trails nonstop. I mean, it's a huge effort. And again, not a lot of people know that, you know, and, not that they need to know that, but it's it's important for the mayor's office to showcase everything that I think the city has to offer. And to your point, it's great family fun day. You know, it's free. Have a picnic and just walk the trails at Marlboro. You know, there's one 26.2 Panther Loop. I mean, you can basically walk a marathon and it's one big loop. And like, why wouldn't we encourage that, you know, to right. be out in, 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 the, in the city? So I'm looking forward to the to the hike, people. To I think I had to buy some boots. I don't think I have any hiking boots. <laughs> I should probably do. Will you, will you need bug spray in April? Bug spray, yeah, probably, probably. Yeah. Sunscreen. Make yeah. sure you put on the sunscreen. But, you know, ticks. You know, I don't oh. know. yeah. I th just thinking of all the possibilities that that could happen. But I mean, I'm very excited again to. Oh, you know, the sun's like and, and, fun. And why not? Like you know, like this is the community that I grew up in. Grew up in. It's the community I live in. So why not? 
utilize all the resources that it has to offer. Absolutely. Uh, one last note here is that I have um, on April 3rd, Congresswoman Trahan is going to be hosting a casework clinic, and that's going to be at the Senior Center, correct? Correct. From what happens in that sort of... Yeah, you know, so uh, what's great about the Congresswoman's office, they reach out to us. They've done this in other communities, and so it's just a resource for National Grid, Eversource, ARP, Comcast to come out and kind of explore. Oh, so it's going to be a lot of different vendors different that you vendors. probably interact with yeah. on a regular basis. How they can save on their bill or what's going on with their bill. So if they have questions, um, other legislatures will be there. It's Jamie Eldridge or Gregoire. Um, Gentile, so someone from their office will be represented. I can't guarantee if they will be there personally, but again, it's just an outreach, you know, for other people that, hey, hey have questions or concerns. So Mass Health, um, Health Connector, Attorney General's office, I'll be there. Um, so it's just a great way to connect with different legislation. And I've noticed a trend recently that more of our local representatives are reaching out to have open office hours. I think uh, yeah. Gregoire just recently was yeah. oh, had some open office hours at the library. Correct. Uh, so it, it, yeah. I'm not sure if maybe it's trickling from you, the, this willingness to be out there and be open and 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 have these face-to-face conversations. It's, I mean, it's spreading. I won't take credit for it, but I'll be happy to. No. <laughs> sure. No, again, I think that... It, it, Anytime there's an administration change, whether good or bad or indifferent, you know, and and no disrespect to the previous administration, but it it, it brings new life, you know, or new energy, you know, and I'm excited to be able to do that. And if other people respond to that, then then that's great. But I'm excited to be at this clinic and just kind of give back to the community. So if people want to come out, they, they certainly can. And of course, we should note that these things that we ran through today are really more of the outward facing opportunities for the city to get involved. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes at, at City Hall that I'm not even privy to. It's all locked away up on the up on the fourth floor. Yeah, and the secrets. All the secrets. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no there's secrets. no secrets. No, no. And I think that's what's exciting about, you know, like obviously being in this role for three months now, you never know the day to day, you know, and there's a lot of day to day, you know, but we're able to continue to still being outward facing. And that's, I think, the most exciting part of the administration um, to continue to be able to do that and come and share that information with the people that are watching at home or streaming. Um, and I thank you for the opportunity to do that. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us again today. It's been great. Next month. Can't wait. Yeah. Well, that brings us to, to the end of another episode of Corner Office. I always forget I have to look at the screen here, but uh, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions that you'd like for us to pass along to, to Mayor Christian Dumas, please send them along to, to me or reach out to his office directly. This is a great forum that we have here on WMCT TV to answer those questions or uh, shed light on new things that are happening right here in the city of Marlboro. I'm Ryan Malley, our executive director here at WMCT-TV, and thank you so much for tuning in.